It's summertime, and if you're a student, that means you have a lot more free time with school out of your life. You got time to get a job, to relax, to go on a vacation, and to learn. If you've been through or you're currently in high school, you probably have a negative association with learning in your free time, and, and I don't blame you. I think that the school system teaches you that if you're learning in your free time, it's either to catch up or to get ahead. There is no in-between. There is no learning for the sake of learning. Learning for fun. To many students, learning for fun is an oxymoron. The only fun parts of school for a lot of students are hanging out with classmates, with friends. Rote memorization and recitation, which is the bread and butter of many schools and many teachers, is the opposite of fun. It's painful. But the truth of the matter is that learning is fun, or at least it can be. I want you to think about your favorite subject. Mine is computer science. And now think about a moment in your history of learning that subject where you finally got something, where a concept finally clicked. All the puzzle pieces that you were struggling to put together finally fell into place. And think about how that felt. It's kind of a warm, fuzzy, it's a good feeling. And that good feeling, that excited, warm feeling, that's the feeling that learning should have. And it's a feeling that learning does have when we're kids. When we're kids, we're innately curious. We're always asking why. We're trying to understand things and we get immense satisfaction out of doing so. But somewhere along the line, that curiosity gets crushed and we come to understand that all of the learning that we do needs to be for some purpose. You learn in school to get into university and you learn in university in order to get a job. There is no room to learn for the sake of learning. Now, immediately, you might say that learning for the sake of learning is a luxury only afforded to the privilege, that you would love to spend your life or your summers or all of your free time learning, but you have to work. And trust me, I understand that the drain that working full-time can have on your time and your energy. I've worked full-time for my summers for since I was 15, and that's nothing compared to what some of you guys are doing. 40 hours a week is, is nothing compared to what some people work. But here's the thing, you don't need to be a full-time or a part-time student, you don't need to be in a school to learn. When you're learning on your own, you dictate your own schedule. You dictate what the curriculum is and how it's going to be taught. It's all on you. As long as you have some free time, you can learn. And odds are, if you're watching this video, you've got some free time. Now, the next thing that you might say to contradict this is that while learning on your own might be fun and enjoyable, it's ultimately kind of useless. You could be spending that time working and furthering your career and doing things which will benefit you further down the line. But what I'll say here is that the learning that you do in your free time is often much, much more beneficial to these later opportunities than any learning that you'll do in school. So whether it be for a university application, or a job application, or starting a company, all of these things will be tremendously aided if you can bring in external knowledge and external experience than what you learned in school. To give an extreme example, in my field of work, in technology, computer science, a lot of companies now don't care whether you have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or anything like that. They want to see what you've built. And as a result, there are tons of software engineers who are being hired without degrees. And it's not just technology and computer science and software that's like this. Historically, if you look at any major field, be it science, math, English, any subject that you can name, hobbyists or people who have had full-time jobs in unrelated fields have made major contributions. And hobbyists will, presumably in the future, continue to make major contributions as they are in the present. So if hobbyists have contributed to these fields and you would be a hobbyist, then why couldn't you contribute to these fields? One of my favorite movies of all time is actually you know, centered around a, a very similar topic. It's Goodwill Hunting. And in arguably the most iconic scene in the movie, he hits a Harvard student with this line. You dropped 150 grand on a f***ing education you could have got for $1.50 in late charges at the public library. <laughs> Today, the only thing that is no longer relevant about this line, perhaps, is the $1.50 in late charges, because we have the internet. I'll tell you right now, there is not one thing that I've learned in any of my courses at Harvard that has not been freely available online. There's been no secret piece of information. Nothing like that. I could have learned every single piece of academic information if I had just gone online. Now, that's not to say that, you know, going to college isn't worth it at all. There's a number of reasons why college is worth it. But in terms of learning the actual content, 
you could do that from the safety of your own home. Because when it comes to actually doing things, it doesn't matter where you studied. It doesn't matter how much you paid or how many years you were in school. What matters is what you know and what you do with it. And yes, arguably today, you can get by without knowing or doing anything, especially if you're coming from a privileged background. But who wants to live like that? Right? Like, I believe we all have this, this fundamental innate desire to do things and to know things. And I think that's reflected in the curiosity of children. And what happens is we just push that down. And I think that as soon as we stop pushing that curiosity away and we start to recognize it, we start to feed it, then we can change our lives. So how do you do it? Because, because most people can't just reinvent their lives overnight to be learning all the time. It's just not realistic. But that's not, that's not what you need to do. I think what you need to do is make a regular, daily, small commitment to exploring and to learn. So for me, for the past year and a half, I've dedicated a few minutes every day to reading a book. And the book changes, sometimes it's fiction, sometimes it's nonfiction, whatever interests me. And I've averaged about a book a week. And so over the past year and a half, I've gotten through 78 books, which is probably about as many as I'd gone through in the previous 10 years. I think that consistency and patience are the two things that you have to focus on in this. So let's say you want to learn deep learning, right? I have this textbook here and it's 710 pages long. And if you tried to binge through it in a weekend, you would fail. But if you read two pages every day, you'd get through it in less than a year. And if you did that for 50 years, from the time that you were 20 to the time that you were 70, you'd get through 50 textbooks. And if you doubled it and you read four pages every day, well, you get through a hundred textbooks. I mean, think about how much that would change your life. For me, reading a book every week has changed my life tremendously for the better. I find that I'm more literate, I'm more curious, I'm just generally a happier person. But of course, reading isn't the only way to do this, right? The, the thing is, if you can make a regular daily commitment to learning and to exploring in some way, be it, you know, watching videos online that are educational, or building a coding project, or working on a painting, or writing a novel, if you can do that every day, consistently, for years, you will eventually get to a point where you can look back and say, you know, I've done something amazing. So ask yourself, do you have or can you find, can you make the 15 minutes it'll take every day to read two pages of a textbook or to write a hundred words of a novel? Because if you do, and you probably do because you've watched this video, then ask yourself, what's holding you back from doing this and from changing your life? Now, I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring today's video. I've actually used Audible consistently for almost a year now. It's been awesome. I love using it when I'm walking, when I'm commuting, etc. Now, this month, the book that I'd like to recommend to you is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's famous, it's a classic, but what you might not know about Lewis Carroll is that at the time that he was writing it, he wasn't making a career as an author. He was actually working as a mathematics lecturer. He would make up these kind of fantastical stories that he would tell kids. And eventually, this kind of just came out of one of these stories was Alice and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's now one of the best-selling children's books of all time. But it's not just a children's book. I really enjoyed listening to it. Um, it's like, it plays with logic. It's fun. Now, if you want to check out this book or, or any of the other pieces of audio content that Audible has in their enormous collection, then I recommend you head over to audible.com slash johnfish or text code johnfish to 500, 500 So if you head over there and you're a Prime member, then what you'll see is that Audible actually has an amazing deal going on right now for July where your membership is going to cost you $4.95 a month instead of $14.95 a month. And this is valid for the first three months of your membership. So essentially you're getting three months for the price of one and in each of those months you're going to get a credit for an audiobook as well as two free Audible original pieces of content. This is only valid by the way if you sign up before July 31st so if you're interested I'd recommend heading over to audible.com slash johnfish or texting code johnfish to 500, 500 So thanks for watching this video. I'm John Fish. I really do appreciate it if you subscribe, uh, turn on notifications because subscriptions are kind of funky right now, uh, and maybe head over to Instagram and follow me at the John Fish. I have an announcement video coming out later this week, uh, so yeah, if you don't have notifications on, I recommend turning them on because it's kind of a big announcement. So I'll leave you there, a little cliffhanger. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.